The appendix is a tube that looks like a small sac or pouch. It's connected to the colon near the beginning of the large intestine. The appendix doesn't have a known purpose, however, it may have something to do with the immune system. Appendix cancer is sometimes called appendiceal cancer. It occurs when healthy cells become abnormal and grow rapidly. These cancerous cells become a mass or tumor inside the appendix. When the tumor is malignant, it's considered cancerous. Appendix cancer is considered very rare. In the United States, there are about 1.2 cases of appendix cancer per 100,000 people each year, according to a 2015 review trusted source. There are different classifications of appendix cancers that aren't well defined. The lack of well-defined classifications is due to the rarity of this type of cancer, which limits the amount of research. The broad classifications of appendix cancer are described below. Types of appendix cancer colonic type adenocarcinoma This accounts for 10% of appendix cancers. It's similar to colon cancer in look and behavior. It usually appears in people between the ages of 62 and 65 and is more common in men than women. Mucinous adenocarcinoma of the appendix also called MA for short, this type happens in females and males equally, typically around 60 years old. MA is further classified as either low-grade high-grade goblet cell adenocarcinoma goblet cell adenocarcinoma is also called GCA. It's rare accounting for just up to 19% trusted source of all cases of appendix cancer in the United States. It involves the presence of intestinal-type goblet cells. Goblet cells reside in the intestinal and respiratory tract. Neuroendocrine carcinoma in this type, sometimes known as typical carcinoid, a tumor forms with certain cells from the wall of the bowel. It accounts for about half trusted source of all appendix cancers. It can metastasize, or spread, but can be successfully treated with surgery. Signet ring cell adenocarcinoma This may be considered a subtype of colonic type adenocarcinoma or mucinous adenocarcinoma. While it's the most aggressive type and most likely to spread to other organs, it's very rare. This type more commonly occurs in the colon or stomach, but can develop in the appendix as well. What are the symptoms? Appendix cancer may not have any noticeable symptoms in the beginning. It's usually discovered during surgery or during an imaging test for another condition like appendicitis. Your doctor may also discover it during a routine colonoscopy. However, if there are symptoms, they may include bloated abdomen ovarian mass chronic or severe abdominal pain nonspecific discomfort in the lower right abdomen obstruction of the bowel hernia diarrhea Many of these symptoms may not occur until the cancer is more advanced. What are the risk factors? While some experts state that there are no established risk factors for developing appendix cancer, a few potential ones have been suggested. These include pernicious anemia a deficiency of vitamin B12 atrophic gastritis, or long-term inflammation of the stomach lining zollinger ellison syndrome, a condition of the digestive tract of family history. Of multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1, MEN1, a disorder that leads to tumors in the glands that produce hormone smoking What are the treatment options? The treatment for appendix cancer depends on the type of tumor stage of the cancer person's overall health surgery is the most common treatment for localized appendix cancer. If the cancer is localized to the appendix only, then the treatment is usually to remove the appendix. This is also called an appendectomy. For some types of appendix cancer, or if the tumor is larger, your doctor may recommend removing one half of your colon and also some lymph nodes. Surgery to remove half of your colon is called a hemicolectomy. If the cancer has spread, then your doctor may recommend cytoreductive surgery, also called debulking. In this type of surgery, the surgeon will remove the tumor, surrounding fluid, and possibly any nearby organs that are attached to the tumor.
treatment may include chemotherapy before or after surgery if the tumor is larger than 2 cm. The cancer has spread, especially to the lymph nodes. The cancer is more aggressive. Types of chemotherapy include systemic chemotherapy, given intravenously or by mouth, regional chemotherapy, given directly into the abdomen, such as intraperitoneal chemotherapy, EPIC, or hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy. HIPAA combination of systemic and regional chemotherapies afterward, your doctor will follow up with imaging tests, such as a CT scan or MRI, to ensure the tumor is gone. What's the recurrence and survival rate? According to a 2011 review trusted source, 5-year survival rates for appendix cancer after the appendix was removed are colon 94% if the carcinoid tumor is confined to the appendix 85% if the cancer has spread to lymph nodes or nearby areas 34% if the cancer has spread to distant organs, but this is very rare for carcinoid tumors the 5-year survival rate increases for some cases of appendix cancer when part of the colon is also removed and chemotherapy is used, however, not all cases of appendix cancer require these additional treatments. What's the long-term outlook? The survival rate and outlook are generally good for most people with early-stage appendix cancer. In most cases, appendix cancer goes undetected until an appendectomy is already being performed for other reasons. After any cancer diagnosis, it's important to follow up regularly with your doctor to be sure there's no recurrence of cancer.